Good evening, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the Feast of the Holy Family. I'm Chris, and along with Scott, we will be leading the music. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding and preaching at Liturgy Today is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We continue our celebration of Christmas by unfolding and unpacking the Christmas mystery even more. Tonight we focus in on the Holy Family. Now the Holy Family um, are a particular favorite of mine mm -hmm. because so many people tend to want to say there's a particular way a family should live, family should be. And yet the Holy Family gives us a different insight. They give us an insight into the complexity of the human world and also the necessity we have to connect with the God world. So as we think about that mystery tonight, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are child of God and child of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our brother and call us to be one family. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us when we fail to love each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill, 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. 
He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be blessed and prosper. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Your wife, like a fruitful vine, in the heart of your house, your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, 
the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. became flesh and came to dwell among us all accepting him will become children of God Alleluia 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 Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves and two or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous, devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and bless God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, 
but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. Then when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. What did Mary know about who and what she was prior to Gabriel's visit? I will bet most of the love for God that was part of the Immaculate Conception piece was in place, but she was not aware of it. I think she maybe was not aware for quite a bit. And what about being a wife? She had no first-hand experience, obviously, prior to marriage. Would that be for those of you who are wives? Was not marriage itself your great teacher? And the cliche, if I knew then what I know now, do you use it to think about it? I will bet when we all get to meet Mary face to face, she will have a lot more in common with the experience of being a wife and mother with those of you then than with us priests and celibates who reflect on it. When Mary gets hit with, you will become pregnant, for anyone to find out that they are going to be a mother is big news. Try to explain to others that this is God's kid. Pregnancy is already difficult enough. And I'm sure you have all imagined Joseph's reaction to the same news. It was clear in Matthew's gospel that I shared on Christmas that he was going to divorce her quietly. Almost everything we know about Joseph is lore, except the scriptural source traditions that we see, save for his being a carpenter a righteous and upright and just man, and someone who had powerful dreams. The vision from God in the dream is that it would be okay for him to take Mary as his wife and to not be afraid. He was older than the 20s, 30s, or 40s, although older then was much younger than we think of as old today. In the first century, Palestine life expectancy for a man was probably about 35 years old. Any artistic depictions of Joseph, the gray-haired old man, could be questionable. Was this a second marriage after a first wife had died, or did he just marry later for whatever reason? Those are questions we can still ponder and especially that we might look at as we enter this year of St. Joseph 2021. And the kid, Jesus. You will run into the same set of questions about him as with Mary. What did he know, and when, and what about his powers, and how did he discover them, how did he use them? And you can say that he knew everything from the start, but we do not hear much in the scripture that raises that curtain early on, save his escapade in the temple when he is debating with the elders. Next week on Epiphany, we will be hearing about the Magi and Herod's desire to pursue and eliminate the child and the Holy Family then takes it on the lamb and heads to Egypt. There you have it, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, not your typical 21st century nuclear family. And in truth, the Holy Family has never been a typical family in any age or culture. And we could glean from them that there is no one typical family. 
all our families are unique and special. What makes the Holy Family holy is two things. First, they are holy in the same usual way that all families are. They are unique, with each and every member joined and having the same sacred combination of dignity and uniqueness given by God, regardless of economic status, race, culture, physical and mental capacities and perspectives, each called by God, unique and special, each of us. In our world today, there are people, even religious people, who would disagree with that. But from the beginning, and continuing now and for all eternity, God created humans good. And if we are God created, we are holy. And the coming together as family is holy and resonates to all who come in contact with. Families are holy. The complication is in our choice to acknowledge that and to use the gift we are given to help others and to help others know their giftedness. The second way the Holy Family is holy is their choice, and I underscore here choice, to always put God first in their lives. We heard earlier this month the passage, Hail Mary, full of grace, and then her acceptance of God's will to carry and give birth to Jesus. Joseph is the righteous one who accepts God's message through an angel in a dream to make Mary his wife and Jesus his son, and then does not even blink or hesitate when the next dream request is to protect the family by taking them to Egypt. Mary and Joseph are used to putting God first in their life decisions, no matter how difficult. And Jesus certainly would have been influenced by the acceptance of who they were and their choice to go ever deeper into the heart of God. Capstone for us today, as we are in a world that is spinning around us with uncertain answers to complicated questions, where dignity and sacredness of life seem of secondary value to money and possessions, where the choice to believe is obscured by the clutter of too much incoming messaging that has not always been vetted by the truth. The capstones for us, Simeon and Anna. These two characters, Simeon, a holy man like Joseph, led by the Spirit, and fulfilling the Spirit's mission for him. And Anna, a holy woman, knowing she too must fulfill her call and mission. Both are devout, religious, just, and pious, and their words that they pass on will be fulfilled by Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. While their words surprise the Holy Family, they do not surprise us. And the Holy Family will fulfill the blessings and the thanksgiving given for Jesus. He will become all that he is prophesied about. This child is the star that illumines the Spirit of God. His presence and power are recognizable to those who pray and watch and obey the will of God and hoping on behalf of the people. The Holy Family includes all those who are consoled by the presence of this child of peace who has come into our world. All of you, holy people, holy families, it is up to you to live the promise of the Savior, Christ, whom we must share with one another by our understanding and our actions. Let us do so.
So let us all be strengthened as together we profess our faith. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As a holy family of believers, we join our voices together in mutual support and prayer. For the domestic church, the church revealed in our homes, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families of the earth and for their safety and well-being, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless, those living in exile, and all who long for a place to call home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and for all who work to share gospel values with others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant healing and strength to those who have experienced the death of a loved one, especially the loss of a child, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the new year will bring a world at peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be comforted by the tender compassion of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Marceli Godkowski, will rest securely in the eternal peace of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in prayerful silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As you know, during this time of COVID, with all those people joining us online, we pause for a moment for you to raise up your prayers. But tonight, let, let's take an added focus on that, especially if you are gathered with family members. Maybe say a particular prayer for each other and your homes. Those of you who are gathered here with family, you may want to whisper into each other's ears a, a special prayer that you have for each other. Let's take a moment to raise those prayers in our hearts. For all these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, accept our prayers that we place before you with confidence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Because we are not able to gather your financial offerings in the usual way, please drop them in one of the metal boxes mounted on the wall near the baptismal font or tonight we also have the Christmas basket out as well. Uh, you who are joining us from home may mail your contributions directly here, or you can donate online by clicking on the donate button on the parish website. As always, we thank you for your generosity and the blessings you share with us all. May God bless you as well. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. 
Why lies he in such mean a state Where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners Here the silent word is pleading This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and for us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Now in some special family-like way, give a sign of peace to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. As most of you know, during this time of COVID, there are special directions for communion. So please follow the directions of the ushers, or if you have questions, check with them. They will invite you to come to the ends of your pews, where they will sanitize your hands. Please rub that in, and then keeping your hands together, socially distanced from each other as you move toward the Eucharistic minister. When you get to the minister, please extend your hands. We will place the body of Christ into your hand, and then move to the yellow decal about six feet away, and only then lower your mask and consume the communion, and then put the mask up and head back to your places. Thank you for your help keeping everyone safe during this time of pandemic. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word of my salvation. As we taste the bread of heaven and the cup of love outward, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord. The house of bread rejoices, singing heaven's great refrain. Let us join them in the Gloria, and give glory to God's name. As we taste the bread of heaven, and the cup of love outpoured, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord. On those who walk in darkness, those who dwell in lands of gloom, shines the light of love's eternal flame, Jesus, fruit of Mary's womb. As we taste the bread of heaven and the cup of love outpoured, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord. Behold the Virgin Mother as she casts her loving gaze on the love she bears into the world, singing lullabies of praise. As we taste the bread of heaven and the cup of love outward, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord.
This banquet of God's goodness now reveals the love of Christ. Child of heaven, child of Bethlehem, who has died to bear new life. As we taste the bread of heaven and the cup of love outpoured, we proclaim your birth, Emmanuel, child of Mary, Christ the Lord. Most merciful Father, bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament to constantly imitate the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. This Friday is January 1st, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, Mass will be celebrated at 10 a.m. on Friday. Uh, you can make a reservation to attend the Mass in person at oldstmarys.com or by calling the church office. Mass will also be live streamed on the parish website. And because of the coronavirus pandemic, there's no obligation to attend the Holy Day Mass next year. It says this year, but I know it's next year. Um, so that's then. Uh, remember that we have um, the Sign Up Genius on the website for signing up for all of our weekday and Sunday Masses. OldStMary's.com is where you'll also find the bulletin with all the announcements and all the special things that are going on in these weeks. There's also a long-standing Catholic tradition of blessing homes on the Solemnity of Epiphany, which is January 3rd, next week. Um, if you would like to observe this tradition in your household, please pick up the blue Epiphany of the Lord Catholic Household Blessing Leaflet, or you could just call it the Household Blessing Leaflet. And uh, from the table in the commons, it's blue. Uh, the Blessing Leaflet is also posted on the website uh, for you to download from there. And we also have copies of the 2021 Catholic Extension Society calendar, they're available in the commons on the table on your way out. And uh, we hope you will take one. We hope you will have a great rest of the Christmas season and a great new year. I'm actually going to be taking a little bit of a break uh, over the next couple weeks starting on Monday. So you won't see me as much. I'm not gone. I'm just keeping a low key. So please pray for me and I'll be praying for you all too. And finally, please remember to stay in your places until after the closing song, and then uh, the ushers will guide you out. Thank you for being here tonight. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Go now in peace to take care of the human family. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echo back their joyous strains Gloria In excelsis Deo Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be Which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria in excelsis Deo Gloria in excelsis Deo Come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. No.